The kids are at odds with no plan for their next move until Molly's parents' videotape clues them in to the real dangers that Pride's project can bring to the entire city. Which forces Jonah to ask the real question, do you know where your children are? Going to kick some butt! That's where they are. We're counting down to the big finale here on Marvel's Runaways! Season 1, Episode 9. Doomsday. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome back to our continuing coverage of Season 1 of Runaway. So, yes, spoilers. I know, they're coming. I say this every time. Alright, so, Episode 9, Doomsday, does start back off, as many of the episodes have, with our flashback. And here we are flashing back to the Hernandezes and that fateful night of their death their basic discovery that uh, the, the, the samples that they dug out of the giant hole, well, it's not giant at this point. They were just sort of sussing out what it is that uh, Jonah wanted them digging into over on Jeffrey's estate there, uh, is in fact something alive, something strange, something glowy in the rocks. Uh, and definitely not something that they should have found out uh, because what they quickly discover is a big beeping bomb on the floor which ends up blowing them all to hell. And strangely enough, Molly, being in the office with them, survives. And how does she survive? Because she happens to be holding on to one of those big glowing rocks, after which her eyes begin to glow. So we're starting to see is this is probably where uh, Molly has actually gotten her powers. This isn't something directly from her parents, but in fact is exposure to whatever this is that's underground that Jonah is trying to get to with this big pride uh, dig construction project. Um, what we also see in this is uh, who happens to be walking away from that site and that is Leslie, who uh, uh, seems to have called up Tina on the phone at that point. Tina being told of what had happened. I guess Tina had discovered what was going on, had called Leslie, and Leslie went in and took care of business right here. But this is where Tina actually burnt herself on the stove cooking. So Robert's line to Jeffrey way back in episode three that no, that burn came from uh, from a stove damage, was actually true. Jeffrey's suspicions that Tina was involved with the death of the Hernandez is not correct. I mean, is, but peripherally. She had reported it, but she wasn't there ready to, uh, to make that call for them to be killed. So, um, yeah, some interesting revelations here, both in what happened to the Hernandezes, who was responsible, and how Molly survived and possibly got the powers of super strength that she has. Now, as for the kids nowadays, they're kind of in a tough spot. Now that Chase destroyed Alex's computer, which had the videotape they've been trying to get that had the evidence the, uh, on their parents, and that's destroyed. There's no way of recovering. They didn't back up. The hard drive's trashed, so... They're kind of stuck in a bad position with no plan going forward and huge schisms amongst many of the, the members of, well, the Runaways, as Alex decides to go ahead and give a title in honor of all of the kids that were killed that couldn't be saved. So, again, <laughs> a dark title to your group, which no one really seems to be grabbing onto, though, since it is the title of the show, we know it will eventually sort of catch on with them. Um, however, when you've got no plan, then you might as well dance. Uh, and that is Gert's whole philosophy on, you know, just 
it's 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 the school dance. Let's go for it. I have to say, there's a lot of activities. I mean, what two episodes ago or three episodes ago, we had the Pride Gala, and then right after that, we had the Open House, and now this episode, we have the school dance. A lot of these social activities going on that the kids have to negotiate, as well as dealing with evil serial killer parents and unknown Jonah Devil guy. That's sort of a lot. Um, though not without a plan for very long, when Molly shows up with her parents' videotape, which they are finally able to take a look at, thanks to Alex's connection with the old AV club. Love Gert's line. That's literally the club that they use to show somebody who's a loser. It's true. Whenever the AV club is mentioned, always supposed to be losers. Except for Stranger Things. Because those kids are awesome too. Uh, anyway, but what we finally see on the videotape is, is that underneath... Uh, the construction site where the Pride is building, is supposedly the school, there is a hidden fault. If they dig down in there, it could potentially release a devastating earthquake for all of Los Angeles. So now, regardless of the conflict that the kids have amongst themselves, they know what they have to do. They've got to break into the construction site and they've got to destroy whatever they can. They have to stop this because it's not just parents killing each uh, killing kids right now it's not just murder this is something that can infect the entire city and even once realizing this even alex is starting to realize that hey maybe our parents are in over their head maybe this is they're involved in something that's so much more than what they think that they're involved so possibly a good thing for the moment that they didn't go and turn their their parents in i mean from an emotional standpoint, you're still kids, still parents, there's still love and relationship going on right there. So it's a kid's group date to go to the dance. Um, and any sense of everything being okay, definitely just a, uh, a face forward on that a full, a whole front. <laughs> I love it when Alex, when Nico called up Alex from, the, from Amy's phone, it's like, Oh my God, what's going on here? And it's just Nico saying, I got in, I got the information, I got the warning, there was the text, some unknown number to get out of there. Alex trying to apologize, and uh, what, even as they're getting ready. And Nico's just like, yeah, tell that to, that, that would be important if I still gave a crap. This is all just a front anyway. We're not actually okay together. It's just, oh man, shut down in a heartbeat. So their relationship, Definitely not moving forward. However, Gert and Chase, that definitely is moving forward here. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, Gert looked really nice. That the Chase went out with them, and they got to the whole makeout scene super quick, and clothes coming off, and yeah, at the school dance. I guess that's where things happen. Uh, also, not the only ones. Carolina decides to give uh, Nico a nice big smooch there. Hey, this could be the end. We could be dying. Want to be sure I do this. And Nico doesn't really pull away in this. There's a little kiss back in that moment. So, again, while Alex and Nico may not be going well moving forward, Carolina and Nico might. Uh, we and I did love as they kind of have that break and turn around and we get the shot of Chase and Gert. Putting the clothes back on and oh yeah it's it's cool it's what dances are for right so yeah we got some relationship action moving forward here uh but also still maybe i don't know i think gert's kind of concern and worry and stuff gets the better of her sometimes she should just let things go and not necessarily push because what was it an hour later when they're at the construction site and Gert is asking Chase, like, we haven't really defined our relationship yet. Haven't we done this? I mean, and Chase is like, that was like an hour ago. And we're at a construction site trying to stop our parents from setting off a giant city-destroying earthquake. Maybe we should just focus on the moment right now. I worry so much about the whole relationship thing. Uh, so, yeah, some good relationship stuff moving forward, but 
you know, there's still stuff to work out. Uh, anyway, heading to the construction site, uh, that was a whole interesting sequence. We're seeing that Darius has been camping out there, maybe losing his relationship with uh, his baby mama. I can't say wife or girlfriend. I don't really know what their relationship was. They're definitely having a kid together. Uh, but Darius is a little obsessed about this, watching what's going on. Um, and a little difficulty getting into the site, at least Alex's line about... Uh, uh, just call my dad, I'm Wilder, that doesn't work. Why? Because Jonah has had all of the Wilder security people kicked out, which is why Darius has been uh, uh, snooping things out around here, because this guy on the inside isn't there anymore. He got fired. It's all of the Church of Gaborum people uh, in charge right now, and they're watching everything. Uh, where... Carolina is able to just step up and say, like, Hi, well, why don't you call my dad? Which I was wondering if the guard was going to actually do. Was it just going to be, okay, I'll just let you in, but no. Carolina gives the word, he calls up dad, and dad says, Sure, go ahead. Let him in. Help him with whatever they need. I'm sorry I didn't call up, which is great because she had talked to Frank beforehand about trying to help out. So is this Frank helping the kids out, being there for Carolina? Not really, because who's sitting next to him? Jonah. Seems like uh, Jonah and Frank have sort of worked things out. Frank had his little confrontation earlier in there, confronted Jonah, wants to know what is happening and what's going on. Uh, and it seems to be that is how Jonah was able to tell the rest of Pride what all the kids were doing. When he goes through the whole story about, you know, there was the kids' riots and that caused the weekly news to come up with, it's 10 p.m., do you know where your children are? Well, children are heading to destroy the, uh, the construction site. And how does Jonah know all of this stuff? How does Jonah know? Because Frank told him, Carolina told Frank everything Frank confronted Jonah, and so Frank then told Jonah everything, because now Frank and Jonah are buddy-buddy. relationship with Carolina is going to be completely secondary at this point. So now Pride knows where the kids are, they know the plan, and that leads to our epic confrontation by the end of the episode, which was just Beautiful. I mean, we got the kids in there trying to destroy... <laughs> Speaking of Gert and Chase, when they did figure out there has to be an off button, and there does seem to be a big red, can you press this and it will stop everything. Chase doesn't even let Gert press it. Just pulls out the fistigons and ba-boom! Which does seem to stop things. It's set an alarm off for sure. But my worry about that was actually is, well, have you just destroyed the controls that you needed to turn things off? And just by destroying them, does that turn things off? Or does that just prevent you from turning things off? I was wondering if they were going to go that way. Uh, Gert, or uh, sorry, Molly using her super strength to go and push a cement truck down into the hole. That was pretty badass looking. Um... But, of course, before they can do much of anything else, that's when the parents show up. Well, we had, what, uh, Nico using the staff. Fill the hole, and everything's going. It's like, oh, my God, is that going to work? And then, psh, pulls out with the line, you know, if you kept training with me, I would have shown you how to do that. So I guess the staff really is linked to Tina more uh, than Nico. They share the same blood in some ways, the same genetic markers. Um, it certainly seems to be listening more to Tina, who can also use the staff without actually touching it. So, again, interesting stuff. But it was just, it was a beautiful sort of little face-off going on right there with Molly saying, we will fight you if we have to. And just the, the perfect double line up there. I mean, again, great... Uh, um, Great way to end the episode, great cliffhanger. You've got the evil parents all lined up, ready to fight, and then you've got all the kids lined up. You got Molly with the glowing eyes, you got Gert with the dinosaur, you got Chase with the fistigons, and you got uh, uh, Carolina pulling off her bracelet and just going to the whole glow thing. 
was like, this was the power kind of face-off that we've been wanting to see from the beginning. So, perfect way to end the episode and get us ready for the big finale. Oh, and just real quick, I did love this scene between Stacy and Dale when uh, Graciela calls them saying that Molly was missing and they sort of figure out, oh, we didn't get the key? Wait, the Hernandezes left or something? Why? Because they didn't trust us. They thought we could fail. No, they made it towards, they were concerned just in case because they, they knew what they were up against because they failed, so they thought that we could fail. So, yeah, good for that, you know? <laughs> it was just, it was a great kind of just moment of realizing, oh my God, they didn't trust us? But they took chances. They, took, they, 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 they came up with ideas in case things fell apart. Because that's what happened with them. In case it would happen with us. So they don't get it for their It was just, again, I loved just the, the whole sequence. It was just sort of a fun realization of they're not as trusted as they think they are. And yet, things are moving in a better direction than they hope. That this, this lack of trust may actually be helping get them out of this really bad situation they definitely want to get out of. All right, so one more episode to go in season one, but that is going to wrap us up for this review. Thank you so much for joining me. You know what you can do if you liked it? Go ahead and hit that like button. Share with your friends and hit the like button. Thoughts, ideas, and comments, just drop those right down in the section below. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram, right here at Darren Jakes. Hit this button to subscribe. Check out other videos with this button right here. All right, so that's going to be it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.